Ah, uh, yeah. You ready for this? All right, we're rolling. Hey, we're rolling. Ricky kicks it off. <laughs> oh, what are we doing like? Okay, we're doing like... talented, very young gentlemen. They go by the name of Moon Room. It's Ryan, Evan, and of course, of course, Andrew. probably uh, just being a little kid and listening to music and I remember like always asking my parents like like I said listening to a ton of Led Zeppelin and stuff like what is that like who's making that sound like I didn't I kind of when I was probably seven or eight started making these associations like not just hearing the song on the record and being like oh it's just music like not taking it for granted but kind of being like well what's who's like making that sound and how did he come up with that and like and then realizing that it's not just each person making a sound, it's all of them together making one sound. Hearing my mom play piano and my dad play guitar and everybody singing in my family kind of made me interested, interested and inspired to pick up an instrument. You can make people like feel very deeply through these sounds. Love playing piano, love playing guitar, love playing bass, and I love to sing. Being in a family of like musicians definitely inspired me to be a musician myself. Probably ever since I started taking guitar lessons, uh, when I was like six or seven, I started playing guitar. 
I started trying to play guitar. It's just like playing around at first, but then it started, like once all my other friends started like picking up guitars and playing music together, like it just turned into a thing to do that we just play together. So I think that's probably when I decided that it's something I really wanted to do. I'm Connor, and I'm part of Moon Room. I also work at a flower shop. Time to light up this baby puppy. This baby puppy boy. Say my dad. Yeah, growing up watching my dad play gigs, he was a drummer too, so that always kind of gave me the uh, the drive to do it myself, kind of just see him do all these things and see how cool it was. I don't think anyone really has been as supportive as my dad with my music. He shows up randomly sometimes to practices. He just He's always there wanting to know what's new with the band, like what's new with my drumming, what new chops I've come up with, just, just always interested and always pushing me to do better, so. When I was a little kid and my, like my parents got divorced and I was all bummed out, I'd like sit up in my room and I'd listen to Moonlight Sonata. Like I'd listen to Moonlight Sonata over and over again and I'd like draw and get all like sentimental. So I think the main thing that sort of interested me about music in the first place was just the ability to change your mind. It's like you can listen to a song when you're totally sad and it can make you really happy or it can make you really sad or you can, you know, like just even if you're just sitting there chilling and listening to music it's like it changes the whole mood like when you go to parties people listen to this loud like bass music compared to when you're like eating dinner with your parents or you're listening to like some acoustic guitar or, like whatever it is and it's just <clears throat> it really sets the mood <laughs> Dad definitely almost maybe was the catalyst of me playing guitar because he played guitar so much himself kind of making me like it definitely wanted me to kind of feed off of what he knew how to play and then should be like oh check this out you know like kind of like we'd like just jam together and like solo over each other and write songs together so it definitely was a huge influence on me for a KPOV Locals Only stage, here's one of my favorite local bands, Moon Room. I think we've kind of shown that the younger generation can still be into the older types of music like jazz and funk and all those kind of deals. Because when you're really putting yourself into the music that you're writing and the music that you're performing in front of other people, people notice like they see it in the music that you're making right in front of them and they hear it I think we've shown that um, a young band a young local band can make music that people from pretty much any age group can enjoy unlike a lot of other bands where it's a pretty niche crowd I think we're doing a good job of just Playing a little something for everybody. I 
I just love uh, people coming up to us after shows and being like, you guys are fucking crazy. Like, you guys are all, like, 18, 19, like, playing, like, covers of Bill Withers and, like, The Grateful Dead and, like, The Beatles and just bands that you wouldn't necessarily think a bunch of, like, teenagers would cover. So it, it's nice to kind of have that reaction and also just seeing people around town be like, hey, didn't you, aren't you in that one band that like played that show like last week at Volcano? Be like, yeah, that was us. Like, you guys were good, like, thanks. Like, it's just cool to like get recognition for like doing something you love. And it's like nice to like, yeah, just kind of be like welcomed into like, hey, you're good at that. It's like, hey, thank you. Like, I practiced that. <laughs> Patrimony, play bass. I'm Trevor, I do the guitar and the vocals. Pets people. And I pet people. I pet Asian people. I'm Jason, I do drums and auxiliary. <laughs> Songs, some of them I'll, I'll come up with like half of it, and then a riff that he came up with three years ago just happens to fit with it. It's really random. <laughs> it's, it's kind of different every time. I don't pull out the fire. I have to say, probably at first, teenage angst and not fitting in with everyone. I have that too. <laughs> we were we were lovers together, and uh, I don't know, it's the only thing that I believe in. You know, just, Make bed, so just stay up on coast, boy. 
Burnett, and I am the lead man of Reggie Smalls, accompanied by Ryan Picard and Andrew Buffon. I think music is so serious nowadays, like I just, I don't get why people have to take it so intensely. It's just a fun thing to do, you're messing around with a piece of wood that was hollowed out and somebody laid a few strings on it and it makes funny sounds. And it's just kind of like a, an interesting appeal and I just don't think people really look at it that way. They look at it as some way to just gain more fame or money and maybe to just look cool in front of other people. Um, yeah. Just make sounds that people like to listen to and make it more silly. I think everyone desires fame to some point. Like whenever I'm listening to music, I'm wishing I could be a rock star, just like everyone else, but it is also just rewarding enough as a hobby and I don't know, it's just a nice meditative action to just pick up a guitar and be able to hear yourself express your feelings through an instrument and through disrupting sound waves, essentially. And so I, I don't know, I, I don't mind it being a hobby, but everyone desires being a rock star. Because it's cooler than a rock star. Between the trees, my sound won't play my mind at ease Till I got you next to me I don't think we're gonna end up being a big band or anything right now It's just kind of a fun project They've already got their band and I've got other stuff going on So Reggie Smalls is fun while it lasted But I think we'll all have different musical ventures in a little bit but hopefully we'll all still be good friends making music together, uh, whether it's literally together inadvertently feeding off of one another. Uh, anyways, awesome. Yeah. words, what do you think of Moon Room? Actually, we're huge fans. We follow them everywhere they go. I don't know. Connor's my brother. I have to say nice things. I thought they were really original. That's the nice thing about them. Moon Room was great, dude. Funky, groovy. I thought for the age that group was that they they were pretty good. I can't even believe that show they just put on. I was like going the whole time just crazy, but then, you know, when they ended, it was just kind of like, me. dude, I love your band, dude. You guys are sick. How did Moon Room start? Me and Evan played in a band with a couple buddies and we're kind of getting gigs. And then Ryan and Connor had always played gigs together, just like the two of them. Me and Ryan have always been playing together, playing duo gigs and whatnot. And I think Evan and Andrew were the same way. They kind of just been two duos that one day jammed and kind of decided to start something. I think we were like basically like, hey, we all know how to like play a couple songs. Let's keep on practicing songs. And I think one of our first gigs we played, we like had only practiced like a couple times or something. And we got through it and we didn't train wreck it, so we are basically like, after that we were like, yeah, we should definitely be a band. We didn't fuck up our first like gig after like not practicing at all. <laughs> so we were kind of just thrown into like a couple gigs like without really practicing and kind of just came out and been like, yeah, we should definitely keep doing this. I am excited every single time, I don't know. Like, that's the reason why I'm a musician, is to be in front of a crowd and to be sharing my music, the thing that I'm creating with other people and letting them experience what I want them to experience, hopefully. Hopefully it's not just all in my head. Oh. 
I just want them to walk away from the show having a changed view on local music. Just being able to like actually appreciate what we have in our own town. It's, yeah. <laughs> I'm excited more than anything just to spread what I've created. Every once in a while you get this like instinct where it's just like you can't even, it's like this crazy ecstatic like almost out of body feeling where you're just like in the groove and that's all you can think about is being like in that groove at that moment. And I think that's like what a lot of musicians live for. Like 99% of the time I'm playing music, unless I'm writing like a really sad song. Like I definitely feel really like uplifted when I'm like singing, especially when I'm like screaming in a microphone and there's like people listening to me. I feel like that hits me on like almost like a, like a really deep like emotional level. Like I'm like letting my soul out to these people and like they can kind of like hopefully relate to it. So it's like you're putting yourself on the line almost by like performing so it's kind of like a nerve-wracking like euphoric like, uplifting happy energetic like expression of everything The song is called Just Like Cats. It's about a really frightening mushroom trip I had in Northwest Portland. She taught me how not to bite. My name's David Von Schlegel. I'm in a band called Cosmonautical. I've been a band for about four years, five years. My dad was really passionate about music. He always had guitars around, and I wasn't allowed to touch them up until a point until he was like, okay, you want to learn? I'm going to have to show you a few things, and then you can pick these up and play with them. So that was my introduction to guitar. Of course, I took piano lessons as a kid when I was like six to 10, maybe six to eight. You know, it's like I put more hours into my instrument than I have probably performing, but performing, I think I have some bad habits like uh, nervous chatter into the microphone, like things that shouldn't be said aloud, I say aloud sometimes and uh, rocking out, yes. But that's a good habit to have. If you can, if you can kind of lose yourself in the music you're creating, I mean, that's, that's, why I've continued to do it even though I've hit a lot of walls in, in my journey. I'm making the music that I want to hear so when I get a chance to perform it I can show people this is what the music I like to dance to, or this is the music that I like to feel sad to, or whatever whatever was going on when I wrote it. Or and it takes on a new shape every time you perform it. I think too, never the same twice. One of my favorite Miles Davis quotes is like, and I'm not gonna do it word for word, but it's like you spend your first 10 years emulating or trying to be like your influences, and the next 10 years of your career trying to get away from them. Because I think once you figure out your voice and where it, where you are, you're like, well shit, I have this 15 years behind me where I was just trying to do whatever I was listening to at the time, or, you know, emulating John Lennon or the Beatles or something, And but that's a good place to start if you're like, I like what the Beatles did, or I like what... Um, then Lizzie did, I'm gonna go try to start that band. And uh, hopefully from there you find how you how you interpret that that music, you know, whatever speaks to you and 
you're the filter of all these influences. Street lights swinging in the wind. This dust in the street. I'm Terrence Neil Barham, and I'm a singer songwriter. In the deal, I've a solo artist in recent years. Uh, I think what spurred me on was uh, I uh, had been in bands for years prior to moving here to Bend. And uh, didn't do a lot of playing out after I moved here. and Finally ran into a group of people where they, they had a songwriter group that they invited me to join. And that kind of started the whole thing for me. It was an inspiration to just really dig in and start writing my own material. You know, our community has really changed and evolved over the time that I've been here, the number of venues to play at, and the number of great, great uh, musicians that live here. It really made more of an impact on me, uh, maybe give me more inspiration um, to, to become a better writer and performer, try to get out there. It's always great when I can get out and play my own songs and, and get positive feedback on it, but really the community's been more of an influence on me than I have been on it. Sometimes, you know, Musicians, I mean, I would say for myself, you know, I, I just never know what kind of impact I'm going to have, whether it's from one of the songs I've written or because someone enjoys my playing, you know, that you never know what that's going to, what that impact's going to be, but it's great, you know, when, when someone comes along and, and uh, really you can see that it has impacted them. They've just picked a guitar up and get ready to take lessons or you know, the love the song and move them, whatever it might be. Um, because I know what, I know the, the people that have influenced me over time, and their, you know, the level of, um, whether it be commercial success or whatever it is, they've definitely influenced me and in in my playing and my, my songwriting and maybe my singing in, in some instances. It's been influenced by many different artists over the years. So it would be great to think that maybe not now, but maybe someday that there will be people that would be, come back to me and say, hey, that song influenced me. Or you're playing. You know, maybe you want to become a better player. Whatever it might be. many of you guys decide that you are no longer shy. There's all this space here, and the deal is that if you come up here, I will spit on you, but if you don't, I will try. I'm Caleb. I'm John. Ryan. I'm Dave. And we're, we're Bravey Dawn. <laughs> no one else. Come on, guys. It's okay. We're kind of an eclectic blend of everything from like Weezer to the Toadies to Kings of Leon a little bit. Some some stuff like that. We get we get a little punk. We get kind of punky. We, get, we can we can punk stuff. Out. A little spunky. Yeah, <laughs> spunky. Yeah, we like to keep it interesting. We don't like to play the same shit over and over again. So we try to try to mix it up, play as many genres as we can possibly stand. It's 
I think Nerd Rock just says it best. Yeah. Just a couple of nerds just jamming well, out. Well, it'd be a few. Well, few, whatever, you know. A couple is two. The quadruple of nerds. Quadrant. The quadrant of nerds. <laughs> quadrant of nerds. There we go. Jace. But I don't know, I mean, I enjoy, like, it's really a kind of, like, selfish thing, the way I play, because I just enjoy playing, and if people are around to, like, catch that and they enjoy it, then that's awesome, but I'm not specifically or intentionally trying to, like, influence anybody. I don't know. If somebody hears music that I write and they dig it and they decide that they want to start playing music, best of luck to them. It's... <laughs> Not always that fun. <laughs> like, what he means to say is it's very fun. It's it's very very fun. It's fun. We have fun. Dri drove me to addiction. <laughs> say it one more time, and I'll believe you. <laughs> uh, End question. Music makes you do drugs. <laughs> what is your belief on what it takes to be a musician? Work. Yeah, work. I mean, there's really only one answer to that question. You can't fucking slack off and do drugs and drink booze and be a musician. Eh, drugs and booze can help. They can help in a lot of cases. They can, cases. but as far as like the work ethic it goes, I've also seen a lot of people who were alcoholics, drug addicts, slash musicians that are now, you know, in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and fucking bums. So, I mean, it only gets you so far. Yeah, you have uh, to work. Jam as much as possible with many different people. Yeah, that's another, yeah. that's another huge thing, is playing with people that will force you to step outside of your comfort zone. Play with people better than you, too, as long as they're not dicks. Eh, good musicians tend to be kind of dickish. Yeah, but there's, you know, not like a, like a dick, but just like a, you know, guy's a dick, but like... Oh, no, I'll agree that they're all I mostly male, but... Dick. <laughs> <laughs> this is a man's game. Wanna make them make them dance, make them move a little bit. You know, try and not keep everyone sitting watching me and wishing they were watching something else or doing something else. And that's pretty much all I can really aim for. Strange world, strange girl. We got nothing. Where do you want to be, Jason? I just want to be with these two. Oh. I was out all day. Slaving away. I mean, every song a songwriter writes, they're hoping to that someone connects with it in some way. And whether it's going to make me angry, sad, happy, um, introspective, whatever it is. If you can connect with one person and draw that, um, that's what you're looking for. But yeah, going in, I mean, I always have a little bit of all of that every time I go to some, somewhere to play. Is it realistic? Is it responsible? And is it, uh, you know, is it worth it? Is it, a, is it a lost cause kind of thing to try and turn it into a career? I don't know. It's like making money would be nice. I'd like to be able to make money so I wouldn't have to worry and scrimp and save to be able to go and record something at, with, a, with decent sound quality and uh, do other creative projects like make movies or uh, buy, buy another instrument or something like that. I don't know if you want to add that stuff into your documentary, but that's like my, that's my, um, I'm conflicted about it, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm, we, we love to do it and that's why we do it and we're happy to do it. But someone's making money at these things and it's not us. So everything costs money. If it didn't, then sure, we'd go do it for free, but does that answer your question? I definitely hope we can uh, continue the four of us playing for for at least a few more years, at least. I want to do it as long as we possibly can because I, I really enjoy the music and I love these guys and we have fun. As of right now, I can't really fully support myself of being a musician, so I'll keep on going with the path. I don't know if maybe something happens and then I'd be happy to 
take a semester or a year off and go on tour or whatever it needs to be done. If they don't like my music, I'll talk to them and hopefully try to get it to where they like my music. <laughs> but if they can find their own way to look into my music and love what they see, I'm fine with that. Being able to finally like put all that that like inspiration, that uh, that time and energy of just writing songs and like learning them, like finally getting people to like listen to that is gonna be like really really rewarding and just like fun for us as a band to listen back and be like, remember when we like played our first show at the lot and like we didn't have any songs and now we have like a whole album of songs we're like selling, like it's just pretty cool to like look back on that. The even crazier thing to me is thinking about like if we keep at this and keep doing it and like dig deeper, like we can get to that place we've been looking at since we're little, you know, for all of us. We've been looking up to these people and it's like, if we keep at this and put like the best of our effort and all of our passion into it, it's like we could get there one day. Yeah, cause I'm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm in like a dentist office. Like, sit back, young man. You can't bring it. Yeah. I feel like we're on. Uh, I feel like we're on like cable access. <laughs> 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 Buddy, interview in progress. <laughs> Fuck! 
just like, if, if there's anything in the world that's important to me, it's you guys. Aw, oh, dude, that's the way I feel about our band Moon Room. <laughs> I don't want this to sound generic, but like, dude, we're all friends, but we're also brothers. <laughs> Like if you could have something really fucked up and wrong with you, people eat that shit up. Well, you got to see but anyways. <laughs> <laughs> bunch of other bands just doing their thing, playing shows, and really it's just been Moonroom and the Booster Club mixtape. Hey! Hey!